I know that was painful for you to watch, but let me show you why I did it. I found this vintage 1940s tube radio at a garage sale. Uh, the guy had like hundreds, uh, it's kind of weird, but uh, it doesn't work. Uh, there's some parts missing, but I think this is gonna make a super sweet PC case. I'm selling the internals on eBay if you're an enthusiast on that stuff, and my first order of business is to make the case smaller. And while I'm doing that, I decide to sand off this crusty outer layer, because it looks like there might be some nice wood underneath. All right, we'll do a reveal on this. Uh, fancy transition time, ready? Oh dang it, I forgot to put my hand in the second clip. I'll do better next time. I'm continuing with the smallification, this gives me a second chance for one of these snap transitions. And it's dark out, so that didn't work. All right, time to finish it with some finishing paste that I have left over from my concrete table build. I was waxing this and I reached around and I grabbed in here and there was a rusty nail right over on the back side. And you know what that means, time for my tetanus booster. I didn't realize till I Googled it, but the survival rate of tetanus is uh, really not good. Anyway, I mix up some oil paint, just a brown color, and I do the trimming. And I'm really happy with it. Uh, look at how the veneer is like symmetrical around the center. Next, I need to figure out the case airflow situation. So I've got this little USB fan. I'm gonna use this as an intake in the front. And initially, I think that I'm gonna put, face the motor like out so that uh, the fan intakes, but that kind of sticks out too far. So I decide to flip the fan blade around. This is a DC motor, so I could have just reversed the polarity, but it does look like this fan is really designed to spin only in one direction. Next, I design this little mount for the fan, and I start the 3D print. The old speaker cover has this cool Motorola logo. When I remove it, I realize it's made of cast metal, so I polish it up, and uh, it takes like 45 minutes of polishing, but it looks really good, and I'm going to slap it on the front of this case. And while I'm at it, I decide that some silver front panel buttons will go well with that silver logo, so I put these in. I'll talk about making these things functional later on in the video. Next, I wanted some cool lighting, but RGB LEDs would clash horribly, so I was inspired by these vacuum tubes to get this USB plasma light, which will add a little bit of lighting while uh, working with the aesthetic of the rest of the build. And looks aside, I just like how they're both similar. Both have a chamber, they're throwing off a ton of electrons, but a vacuum tube is guiding the electrons to a plate or not, and using that as a switch versus the globe is just going wild. I cut the base down to make it fit, although I will have to uh, cover it with something because this is two to five kilovolts under there. Uh, best to not lick that. And I don't know if this was just me being overly cautious, but I was worried about the plasma globe interfering with the computer. So I added a grounded Faraday cage around it between it and the PC. And now the 3D printed fan mount is done. So I take that out. It snaps on pretty tightly, although I do add some extra glue. And with the fan and plasma globe now in place, I can finish off the front panel. So I add a little clear window, and then I recently got into leather work, which means I've got some scrap pieces of leather lying around, so I use that for little accent details. Now it's time to make the front panel buttons functional. So I solder on two tiny leads to the little on-off switch of the laptop, and these leads essentially bypass the regular on-off switch. So when I connect them together, um, hey, yeah, all right, so the laptop turns on when I connect them together, and that means I can just connect these two leads to the uh, front panel on-off button. And then I've got this little teensy microcontroller, and I want to make the right and left buttons be volume up and volume down. Uh, luckily, you don't actually need to know how to write code in order to code, so I just find some uh, code online. It's from mechanical keyboard stuff, but uh, this is basically a keyboard just with only two buttons. And uh, uh, yeah, I throw it into the case. And simple as that, now the front panel switches control the volume. Now is probably a good time to mention that if you're a kid watching, uh, don't do anything you see me do at home or um, you'll die uh, immediately. The motherboard is going to mount vertically to the back panel. So I get this half inch extruded PVC and glue together this big bulky block, which the motherboard then screws into. About now, you might notice that this laptop motherboard is missing one of the fans. We will check thermals at the end of the video, given that I do not have a high static pressure fan. Uh, probably not going to be good, but we'll check that out at the end. The USB for the Teensy LC microcontroller, as well as the front fan and the plasma globe, plug into the left side daughter board of the laptop. So I'm losing two USB ports, but those ports will all be internal. And you know that a small form factor build has been done successfully when the back panel goes on just like this. Now to attach the back panel, I have six of these cool brass screws, but they look a little too shiny and new. So I mix up a slurry of vinegar and salt, 
kind of drown the screws in that and then throw them in a Tupperware container and let them patina. All right, so in my totally not biased opinion, this is coming along great. I'm super happy with this thing. Three more things to do. Um, one, I've got this little leather shroud, which will be going around the fan to make the fan look better integrated. Um, two, I've got this plastic piece, which I will be taking the motherboard out. It's going to be glued to kind of the lower part of the fan in order to guide the air that gets pulled in up to the heat sinks. I don't want the air to come in and then just go down around the motherboard and out the back and totally miss uh, the heat sinks. So this will be a little um, guide for the air. And then last, um, my I.O. cutout is rough. So I'm going to take the back out, sand this, paint this, and the I.O. Uh, cutout will look a little bit better. We're on the home stretch. Um, after that, I'll do some beauty shots, and then we'll check the thermals to see how bad the thermals are. So I think it looks great, but now for the question, does the cooling actually work? So I get Furmark running, we're gonna test the GPU temps first. And we're hitting like 84, 85, so it is a couple degrees worse than the stock laptop. I test the CPU with Cinebench next, and here the temps are pretty similar to stock, within a degree or two. So I've built a number of weird computers on this channel, but this is my favorite. This, uh, this takes the cake, and I hope you enjoyed as well. Uh, comment, like, do all those things for the YouTube algorithm, and have a great day.